Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and this week's video is going to be about cutting gears, uh, metric spur gears, using my rotary table. Now in the previous video you saw me make this mount for this uh, NEMA 17 stepper motor. Had it mounted on the uh, on the rotary table and told you we'd do a follow-up on it to see if see if it was precise enough to cut a gear well this worked until it didn't work 99 percent of the time uh when i would send uh, pulses to this stepper motor it would turn the uh, rotary table like i expected but it was a bit of a strain on it. Now, you may recall from my videos on the uh, surface grinder, I used one of these small NEMA 17s for the Z-axis, the in and out on the, uh, on the stepper motor or on the uh, surface grinder. But I had it on a 3 to 1 ratio. In other words, this turned three times to turn the, the shaft one time. And so the gearing on that made this work fine. Here it was direct mount into it. And even though there was no real load on this other than the weight of the chuck and the table on the rotary table, this was in a bind. I, I could tell by the sound it was making a lot of noise going. And every once in a while, not often, but every once in a while you'd hear it miss a uh, step it would uh maybe miss two or three if you've been following the channel very long you know that i'm a retired programmer and so i wrote a program to actually do the stepping or do the rotation of this rotary table uh if you recall from that last video we determined that the original handle that was on the rotary table let me grab it right quick this original handle, if you turn it one revolution, one single revolution, you move this four degrees. So that meant there was a 90 to 1 ratio between this and one whole rotation. So to move this one complete rotation, you would have to rotate this handle 90 times. Each single revolution was 4 degrees. 360 divided by 4 is 90. So the program simply says, okay, if you want to move 20 degrees, 20 divided by 4 means you've got to turn that handle 5 times. These stepper motors are 200 steps per revolution. So if I've got 20 degrees here divided by 4 is 5. So I need to turn this handle 5 times. I need 5 times 200. I need 1,000 pulses to this stepper motor to turn this 20 degrees. On the other hand, the second part that I, uh, second part of the program I wrote for this was if I want to cut a gear, that's got 40 teeth to it, how many times do I need to turn this? So 40 into 360 gives you the number of times or gives you the number of degrees you need to move. If you know the number of degrees, then you know that each revolution here is four degrees. And for each revolution here, you need to send 200 pulses over. So I'm not going to go through that code. It's, it's, to me, fairly simple code. But before we start cutting a gear on here, which is the purpose of today's video, I want us to turn to the workbench and talk about gears just a little bit, and then we'll come back and set up to cut a gear. Okay, here are four, two 40 tooth gears. These are metric gears, and the, reason, and the way I know that in this case this is part of the change gear set that goes with my Precision Matthews uh, uh, 
1127 import lathe. This is part of the change gears, one of the change gears that goes in my Harbor Freight uh, uh, 7X mini lathe. Uh, they're both 40 tooth. I know that by two, two ways. It's stamped on there. Stamped on. But I can also physically count the teeth. Putting little marks on them so I don't lose my place. But they're 40 tooth gears. But obviously they don't mesh together. They're different sizes. So what is the term or terminology that describes to us or or tells us the difference in why this 40 tooth is this diameter and has this size teeth on it versus this one that is also 40 tooth but has a much smaller diameter and the tooth is much smaller. Well, in imperial gears, that difference or that relationship between the number of teeth, size of teeth, and diameter is called diametral pitch. There are dozens if not hundreds of videos on YouTube that talk about diametral pitch. Metric gears, it's called module, M-O-D-U-L-E. And that tells us the relationship between the diameter of a gear, the number of teeth in, on the gear, and the size of the tooth. Module is a simple formula. Diametral pitch is as well. It's just that the math is not quite as standard as it is with module. But you need to know three things about a gear before you can ever start turning it. Number one is the diameter. Number two is the number of teeth on the gear. And the third is the module. Again, the module is the relationship between the number of teeth and the diameter, which will give you the size of the tooth. Now, there's a couple ways to determine what the module is. One, you can buy this set of gauges, or a set of gauges. This one goes from a module of 0.35 up to a module of 4.5. That'd be a pretty big gear there. And I'll tell you right off the bat, if you're thinking about getting into gear cutting, gear cutting is one of the, probably one of the most expensive jobs you'll get into uh, in your home shop. You can buy a set of gauges uh, pitch gauges for cutting threads, you know, maybe five, six dollars, ten dollars for a name brand one. This set of pitch gauges, oh, not diametral, but module gauges, was nearly sixty dollars just for the set of gauges. But you can use one of these set of gauges to find what the module of a gear is. All right, I'm going to start with something that looks similar but it doesn't match. That's a 1.25. Uh, let's go the other way, okay. A 1.375, again, doesn't quite match, it's close. A 1.5 matches perfectly. So that's one way to tell the module, but if you don't want or can't afford or don't have time to order and receive a set of these gauges, there is another way to do that. Again, I told you there's three parts. The module, the diameter, and the number of teeth. And if you know any two of those, you can calculate the third. All right, we're talking about metric spur gears here. And... Again, it would be similar for uh, imperial gears, but
but for the for the day's video we're going to talk metric only and the reason I selected to do that everything I have here in a tin barn that uses gears uh, is going to be metric uh, other than the older surface grinder but my mill both my mills the little one and the larger or the 7x mill and the uh, PM727 mill that you will be using today my Precision Matthews 1127 lathe and the little as I say Harbor Freight uh, 7x lathe they're imports and so the gears in them are going to be metric just like I showed you uh, these are metric gears this one goes with the uh, my Precision Matthews lathe the three parts the module the outside diameter and the teeth number of teeth for this example we're going to we measured this 40 tooth gear and we determined it was a 1.5 module we can take our calipers and measure the outside diameter this one is 63 millimeters remember we're dealing with metric gears so we need to make our measurements in millimeters and we counted the teeth and there's 40 on here if we know either, any two of these three and the two simplest ones to determine is to count the number of teeth and measure the outside diameter so we need to know the module and the reason we need to know the module is that to cut a set of gears or to cut a gear you've got to have a set of gears there's normally eight of them in a set and each one of these gear sets not gears but each one of these sets is matched to a module this gear says m1 on m1.5 so that's module 1.5 and this is good for cutting teeth uh, from 135 teeth to infinity and what infinity was if you were cutting a rack for a rack and pinion gear so this one is one point is 135 teeth around your diameter to infinity this one is 55 teeth to 134 this one is 35 to 54 and that's what we'll use to replicate this 40 tooth gear that matches exactly right on down this next one is I hadn't cleaned the, the shipping grease off of this so it's kind of hard to read 21 to 25 teeth 26 to, to 34 teeth 17 to 20 teeth 14 to 17 teeth and 12 to 13 teeth so a 12 tooth is the smallest tooth you can cut in a 1.5 module as I said you've got to have a set of these gears for every module that you cut this gear I can't replicate this gear with this set of cutters they don't fit this is 40 tooth so you've got to have a different set of gears and that's like I say you can run into some expense gear cutting just the measuring tools again this was somewhere between 50 and 60 dollars this set of gears uh, about the cheapest set I could find was another 50 to 60 dollars so you would need a set of these gears for every module that you run across now you can cut from uh, very small gear or small tooth like 20 or 12 teeth up to the 135 teeth in the revolution so just keep that in mind for every module you're going to cut you'll need a set of gears for that module the same is true for every diametral pitch 
uh, dealing with imperial gears. You have to have a set of cutters for each one. The other hand to that is that you can make your own single point cutters. Something similar to this that you saw me make this shaft in in a previous video. Uh, but again, you would need the, the set of tools to match your, your size. This is no particular size here. This was a, an experiment. So let's very quickly look at the formulas here. We're going to call module M outside diameter D and the number of teeth just T. So if we know the diameter and we know the number of teeth, we can calculate the module. The module equals the diameter divided by the number of teeth plus two. Simple ninth grade algebra 101. We know that if we got a formula, we always uh, do calculations inside parentheses first, then divisions, and then or divisions and multiplications, and then finally addition or subtraction. So we'll substitute values in. We know the diameter is 63. We measured that. We counted the number of teeth as 40. So let's solve this inside parentheses. 40 plus 2 is 42. 63 divided by 42 gives us a module of 1.5, and that's exactly what we measured with the uh, with the gauges. If we know the number of teeth on a gear and we know, I'm sorry, if we know the diameter and we know the module, we can determine the number of teeth. This is probably, would probably be the last use that you would, uh, of these three formulas that you would use. But again, simple algebra, you, if you pass something from one side of the equal to the other side, you reverse what you're doing, so instead of multiplication, you do division, uh, division, or instead of division, do multiplication, instead of addition, you do subtraction. So here, to calculate the number of teeth on a gear, we, inside parentheses, the diameter divided by the module, minus two. Solve inside the parens first, 63 divided by 1.5 is 42. 42 minus 2 gives us 40, which was our unknown. Now, you may be given a specification on a drawing, or, or your neighbor comes up to you and says, hey, I need you to cut me a 40-tooth gear that has a 1.5 module. How big do you need to make your blank? This is the gear blank we're going to use in a few minutes to actually replicate this 40 tooth gear. But how did I know to cut this to this particular diameter? Well, here inside parentheses, we take our number of teeth plus two times the module. We know that we've been asked to do a 40 tooth, 40 tooth gear. So we take 40 plus 2 gives us 42 times the module 1.5 and we get a diameter of 63. Now module is not a foreign term. Module is that relationship between the outside diameter and the number of teeth and that module will determine the size of the tooth. One quick thing before we move back to the mill. Very simple to measure the outside diameter of an even number gear. Get it lined up just right. This is going to come to about, it's going to register about, it should be 63. It's actually going to measure about 62.75. And for those imperial folks, a 0.75 millimeter is about 28, 29 thousandths. So uh, if you come up with a number like 62.75, when you measure that, know that it's a 63 module. Modules will be uh, not all the time 
whole numbers. But there will be values. There are plenty of charts online to tell you what valid uh, uh, diameters or what valid modules are. So if you measure that and it's 62.75, you can come to a module like 1.472 or something, something like that. You'll know that's a module of 1.5. One quick thing I want to point out, though. As I say, measuring across, say, 40 tooth gear is pretty simple. You get on the, the high tooth directly opposite each side. Well, how do you do that with a metric Oh, I'm sorry, with a odd number of teeth. You, it's, it's very difficult, you know, to, to get that at its widest point because there's no two gears that are actually, that are absolutely across from each other. Well, again, it's, it's simple logic. I know these are 14 millimeter holes in these gears. So I measure from the edge to the outside of a tooth, and I come to something like 28, let's get, get back in millimeters again, 28.17 millimeters from the edge to the outside. So it'd be the same thing on this, from the inside edge to the one of the, any one of the teeth. So 28.17 times two plus the 14 in the middle is going to give me the 63. So just a little pointer. All right, let's turn to the lathe now. Uh, well, I'll show you this right quick. You'll need some kind of an arbor to hold your gear blank. I simply made this one out of a piece of 5-8 rod, I believe it was. Turn it down to 14 millimeter here, the size of our inside, inside diameter. All right. Then I turn it down to where, for my case, I used a half four, half thirteen nut. So put our blank on. Oh, I had before I turned that down. I milled a keyway out here for a five millimeter key, and I use a little spacer, something you'd pick up at the farm supply store. Uh, this one was a half inch. I put it in the lathe and reamed it out to 14 millimeter. Put that over. And then, whoops. And then simply a nut to hold everything in place. I'll tighten this down in a second. I, I milled flats on this so I could hold it. But what that does, we're going to put this in the rotary table. This will be in a chuck and rotary table, and this will be supported by a uh, tailstock uh, that matches height with the rotary table. So I'm going to tighten that down. Let's move over to the to the mill. Okay, as you you heard me say, I'm a retired programmer, so I took that uh, math that I just showed you on that uh, visual aid and put it in this program. And again, we're talking about metric gear modules here. S similar logic for a uh, imperial uh, diametral pitch. But in this case, we only know, or we know, we only need to provide any two of these. We know our gear needs to be 40 teeth. And we know, in our case, we know it's a 1.5. So if we calculate that, that tells us that the outside diameter is 63. Again, that's what we cut our gear blank to. But this also tells us our depth, how, how deep we need to cut with that gear that matches for 40 teeth. So over on the uh, rotary table, again, as I said early in, in the beginning, I can do just a number of degrees. If I wanted to go 20 degrees in the plus direction, that, at, as soon as I hit this go right here, 
the stepper motor is going to start turning and it's going to turn the equivalent of five handle revolutions or 1,000 steps and the movement is going to be 20 degrees. Now if I let that go that 20 degrees and do something to that gear blank or whatever and hit go again, notice everything else gets grayed out while the head is moving, while the rotary table is moving. Now we've done a total of 40 degrees. If I wanted to go in reverse back to zero, I could change this to 40 and go. And it's going to rotate the table. Again, notice these are grayed out because at this point the, the table is actually rotating. And I don't try to be a speed demon, unlike on the surface grinder where I would ramp up the speed to get to our uh, desired movement. Here I just take it at a slow speed. What we're going to be using today though is the divisions or teeth. So we know, we've de determined, or we know that we're going to make a 40 tooth gear. That's all we need to tell the program at this point. What the program is going to do is divide 360 into 40 divisions. And it will tell us the number of degrees, handle revolutions, steps, and the number of divisions that we've done. So when you see me over on the mill and you see the table start, the table on the rotary table start moving, that'll be because I hit this go button. So I hit the go button and it tells me the table is going to move nine degrees, which is 2.25 handle revolutions, which is 450 steps. So I'd wait for the table to stop moving and then I would advance the gear across the gear blank. I would advance the gear cutter across the, the blank and then back it up, back the mill table up to our starting point. I'll hit go again. Notice the other stuff is grayed out here. It just came back. We're on our second of 40 teeth. I would cut it. I'd press the go button. You won't be able, you won't see this on the camera, but just know that I'm hitting the go button. And you'll, you'll see the uh, chuck on the uh, rotary table move. And I'll continue to do that until I've reached my 440. I'm sorry, reached my 40 teeth. Now, more than likely, I won't try to cut the full depth, 3.25 millimeter in one pack pass. Probably could in a lunarum, but I'm going to take it like, uh, I don't know, two millimeters to start with, and then go through the same 40 steps again and cut the other 1.25 millimeters. So finally, it's time to move over to the uh, mill and actually uh, uh, start cutting our gear. Folks, I hate to do it with a passion, but uh, I'm going to have to break this project down into at least two videos, hopefully not three. But I just don't feel like I can do justice to this project if I don't explain myself up front. Maybe I talk too much, uh, but I hope you'll come back. Next week, I'll, I'll post the rest of this video of actually doing the gear cutting. But again, I feel it necessary to explain what a module is and how the relationship between the diameter and the number of teeth is calculated. So again, please come back next week for the second part of this video. Take care and I'll see you then.